Okay, this video is for Maya or whoever wants this. This is, we're going through all the review problems on the test, so use this to study. Let me get my little box off the screen. Come on, go away. Okay, uh, come on. Get gone. I don't know. Okay. I don't know why my box is not going away, Ms. Rebel. Make him go away. Calm down. I don't know. Okay, what? Stress. This will work. You ever have access? No, no, I didn't make them on here. Not this okay, one. Not this one. Not this one. Just because it doesn't say. I just can't. Yeah, Otherwise, I, yeah, we, we usually would have, but it doesn't say. Right, right. And but sometimes you have A's and B's and Y's yeah, and stuff. Yeah, so we didn't. We didn't. They just have to simplify. Okay. All right, here we go. Here's where we left off, yeah? We know that we're in a proportion because we're doing percentages. What is P? We always start with P equal to on the top. H naught. P equal to. Point one, that's our claim. We're claiming, claiming 10%. Okay, now, is the bottom one greater than, less than, or not equal to? Because they don't say greater than, less than, so it's just gonna be equal to, not equal to. Which one does the claim go with? H naught. The top, H naught, claim is here, okay? Which means, because of this, we are looking at two tails, correct? Yeah. They don't say greater than, less than, they say not equal to. So I don't know if it's on the right side or the left side, so I'm gonna put it on, on both. 5% is my fish value, okay? Your entire area of shaded, your entire area of shaded has to be 5%. All of the shaded has to, uh, has to amount to 5%. So I'm gonna put two and a half here and two and a half here, right? That means 95% is in the middle, okay? We're doing critical value method. So go to, go to which chart are we on, by the way? For proportion. Z chart. Maybe, maybe put that real big if you don't know which chart you're on. Proportion is Z chart. On the Z chart in the bottom corner, what's 95%? 1.96, negative 1.96. Okay, now all we have to do is the formula, which is P hat minus P over the square root of PQ over N. It sounds like a lot, but it's not too bad. Practice typing this in if you don't know how to do it already. 0 0.091 minus 0 0.1 over the square root of 0 0.1, what's Q? 0 0.9 over N is 362. Okay, what is that value? Anybody got it? I got negative 0.63. I'm gonna do it down here. Z equals negative 0 0.63. Okay, now what do we do? We just do our conclusion, right? All of our calculations are done. Everything is set up and ready to go for us. Where does he live? Wait, you guys are yeah. trying to do this. You guys go so freaking Okay, I'm zooming out, I'm zooming out, and zooming in. Okay, he lives there. So now we just have to make our conclusion. Get into the habit of crossing off and circling. Are we going to say that he's equal to or not equal to? Ma'am, I didn't get that. What'd you get? Negative 0.57. Personally, I don't know. I still do not know how to plug this in. You typed it in for me, and we got negative 0.5. Yeah. No, but I got that. Is it the same result on the Are you sure? Yes. I just showed Taylor. Does it make a difference? It does make a difference. I used 0.09, not 0.091. Oh. Does it make a difference in the outcome, though? Yes. No, I used 0.09. For, for this one right here? It's 0.57. For that top number? Yeah, you need 0.091, I think. Oh, 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 because we came up with that. Um, I would take yours. Yeah, I would take yours. Let's go ahead and use, let's go ahead and use 0 .091, though. And you guys got 0 0.57? It doesn't matter. Negative 0 0.71. 0.71? 0.57. Okay, we're only going to do two decimal places there, okay? So, yes, okay, I would take yours. If you got 6.3, that's fine. Because I didn't... Because when they did when they did this one, they just did 0 0.9 instead of 0 0.9 point zero nine one, which is fine. Which is fine. I didn't tell you how many how many decimals to do. Okay. Sure. You did fine. Okay. So I just do two sets of parentheses. Point zero nine one minus point one. That's my top set divided by the square root, and then I'm gonna do parentheses. And I'm gonna do point one. Times. Times. Wait, say that again. Say it louder. What? The parentheses stuff? 
okay? I only do, this is how I type it in my calculator, parentheses, 0 0.091 minus 0 0.1. That's my first set of parentheses. And then I do divided by the square root, and I open parentheses, and I do 0 0.9 times 0 0.1 divided by 362, close parentheses. So you enter in 0 0.9? No, no, I don't. I literally type this in with parentheses, divided by, Square root, open another set of parentheses, and you're done. Will those be filled in, or will those? Be, I don't know. Those look. I like this. I don't think those will be filled in. Okay, do it. All right, and it's 15 yeah. long and two inches wide. Okay, so you might have to cut them like in pieces or whatever. You know, like. Like if they're so 15, they 15 inches long, you have to cut these two on the same line. Like like so I would maybe just do like a bunch of 2023s. 20, like 2023, 2023. Like those four. Yeah, and I'm sorry you left yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's figure out how to make it so it's 12. Okay. Whatever. Yes, those look awesome. Okay. All right. Did you get it figured out? The people who are typing in? No. We got to get moving because we're not going to get done. I figured it out. Sounds like a personal Okay, we'll get, we'll, we'll get you fixed here. Keep testing. Okay. All right, he lives there. Which one are we going to circle out of these two? The top one. We're going to cross off the bottom one. So this is a FTR, right? FTR H naught and plane. What does FTR mean? Fail to reject. Fail to reject. What? Our calculation Negative 0.57. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. We got to get rolling a little faster. Can we go a little faster? Okay, what method do you want for the second one? P value? Okay, sure, we'll do P value. If you did a different method, you're going to get the same final answer, but your steps in the middle will look different. Okay, P value method. That means we have 0% and 100%. Okay? Now, I won't tell you on the test that this is a proportion. So let's look through. What do you look for first? To test the claim that more than 20%. That's a P. So P and P. And we're doing 20%. Oh, wait. Wait. Equal to? If it's 20%, we know it's proportion. If it's a percentage, we know it's a proportion. Yep. P equals 0 0.20. And then our we're doing more than, which means greater than 0 0.20. Which one's the claim? The bottom one. The, the greater than. Okay. So... Casey just said right tailed, right? Okay? <clears throat> Greater than means we're only looking at the right side, right? Okay? So we only have one tail. Can we use our No, you're going to be fine. 0 0.05 is 5%. So 5% goes there. We have like an imaginary 5% over here. You remember the last one we had to split it? Why did we have to split the 5% in the last problem? Because there was two tails. Okay, and it was equal to, not equal to. So this is 90% in the middle. Okay, got it? Okay, here's the deal. We need to calculate the test value. Z equals, that's still that P hat minus P over the square root of PQ over N, right? P hat, we don't know what P hat is yet. In 227 subjects, they were treated and 52 of them developed nausea. So P hat, P hat is 52 divided by 227. 0.23, okay. So 0.23 is my p hat minus 20% over 20% times 80% over 3, no, 227. That's my calculations for z, okay? Now, I understand that our value, 23%, is in fact greater than 20%, but what we're trying to test is, would it be greater than if we used a different sample? Right? Or is it just particular to our sample? Is 23 greater than enough to say that it's greater than? Okay, what'd you get for Z? 1.13. 1 1.13, okay. All right, now we're doing P value method. So if we convert 1.13 to a P value, do you know how to do that? Okay, 1.13 P value right here. Positive chart. 1.13.87 what? 0.8708, so 87.08%, okay? What is this cutoff mark right here? 95%, right? Because we have 5% there. So where does the 87% live? Like, not in, the sh not in the dark one. So which one are we gonna circle? 
the top one equal to, right? So even though 23% for our sample is in fact bigger than 20, we're saying it's not bigger enough, right? So that's our result. We have an FTR. But even though we got had an FTR up here and our claim was true, here our claim is because our claim is going with the bottom one, right? Claim is false. It's not greater than 20%. Got it? Okay. These next ones, we're doing critical value method for mean. Got it? Mean. Okay. I won't tell you on the test that this is a mean, but let's go to the words. Where, what are we looking for? Mean. To test the claim that the population, oh, mean. To test the claim that the mean. What symbol do we use for mean? What symbol? Not P anymore. We're on to mu, right? Mu is the symbol that we use. Mu equals, and then we've got to say, to test the claim that the population mean is? Less than, less than seven. So we've got less than seven and equal to seven. Which one's no, the claim? The bottom. The bottom one. Okay. Claim is the bottom. All right. No. Let's fill out our bell curve. Left tailed, yeah? Okay. What's the value of fish? One percent. Do we have to split it or not? No. No. One percent goes here. Imaginary one percent goes here, which means we have 98 percent. Okay. Now. The N is 199, and we have S is, is that 1.99? Yeah, Okay, are we going to use T chart or Z chart? Why do we use Z? N is bigger than 30, so we just get to use the Z chart, which is the easier one, right? Z chart, so just the bottom corner. So we're looking at that bottom corner, and we're saying what's 98%? 2.33? Okay, so we've got negative 2.33 and positive 2.33. Really, we don't care about the positive one because we're not going to be in that land, right? We're only going to be on the left side. Now, what do we do? Do the formula. Do the formula. So we need Z equals, and the formula for this one, you got to help me. I don't remember. Yes, right. X bar minus mu over uh, S over the square root of N. Okay. X bar. Oh, shoot. We don't have X bar. What's X bar? 6.19. 6.19 minus 7. So we are comparing 6.19 to 7. Now, I understand that 6.19 is, in fact, less than 7. But is that just for our sample or would that be for every sample? Right? That's what we're trying to test. Okay? S is 1.99. N is like the square root of 199. And when you do that calculation, you get something. Negative. Square root of 5.74? Wow. Yeah, negative 5.74. Okay, so now what? He lives? Negative 5.74 lives way over here in the dark land, right? So is he going to be equal to 7 or is he in fact less than 7? He is in fact less than 7, so we are going to reject H naught, which means our claim is? Claim is true. Okay? Got it? Go to the back. Let's do the confidence interval method. Confidence interval method. <clears throat> All right. I don't know that this is a mean. So look for the words. Oops. To test the claim that these times are from a population with a mean, mean equal, equal to 60. No, 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 no. <laughs> mean, what's the symbol that we use for mean? Mu. I'm missing an H1. Okay. Mu. So the top one is equal to 60. The bottom one is? Because they don't say less than greater than. So not equal to 60. Which one's the claim? Top. Okay. All right. I on the test will not make you calculate the standard deviation on your own for a data set. I will give that all to you. But does somebody have those numbers? What? Like what was X bar? Oh, and what I, was do. I do. I do. I typed it X in. X bar. Is okay. She's got it. S is 19.5. What was N? How do you find N? 15. 15, because there's 15 and numbers, right? And, then, okay. yeah. and our fish value is 5% or 0.05? Okay. Or four, I always think of 0.05. Okay. Um, left tail, right tail, two tailed? Two. Two, because we are greater than or, or equal to, not equal to. So two tailed. So do we have to split the 5% yes. or not? Yes. 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 Split it. Two and a half percent. I can't math. 2.5% and 2.5%. So our middle number is? But no, 95%. 95%. Okay, now we have to decide. We are doing a mean now, which means we have to decide T or Z. It's T. Why is it T? Because Be it's less than 30. N is 15, and we only know S, right? We only know our yes, sample. So we have to use T. T at 95% and how many degrees of freedom? 
and 2.145, okay? But we're doing the confidence interval method, okay? Which means we have to calculate the error, and then we do x bar minus the error, and x bar plus the error, right? That's how you do the confidence interval method. I do not tell you on the test which method to use. You get to choose whatever. I don't care. You choose whatever, okay? <clears throat> the error is T or Z, so in this case it's T times S over the square root of N. All right, T was 2.145, S was 19.5 over the square root of 15. Okay, so what's the error? I got 10.8. 10.8 for an error. Does that sound right? What? 10.9. 10.9-ish, no, maybe, whatever. I got 10.9. I got 10.9. But I used 2.160. I got 10.8. Okay, we'll go 10.8. I hate. I had As, I mean, 16. it just depends on what your middle calculations are. I don't care. It's fine. It's fine. Solar. We'll do 10.8. Whatever. No, okay? What do we do with the 10.8? 10.8. 10. 10. 10. You added that 2.0. Oh, yeah. You chose another wrong one. Yeah, yeah, that's where you got your first one. Well, I got the number close. I got 10.9. Okay, 10.8. What do we do with that number? Plus or minus uh, plus or minus X, bar. From X bar. 62.6. So if I add it, it is like 73.4. Yeah. And what? 51.8. Okay, so that's where mu has to live between. 51.8 and 73.4. Does 60 live between 51.8 and 73.4? So it's equal to, and we're going to cross off the bottom. So it is. this is a FTR 60, or FTR... Uh, H naught and claim true. True, it is equal to 60 minutes ish. Okay, the average is about 60 minutes for whatever we're talking about. What did we do that for? Okay, that was confidence interval method. Okay, two left. Are we gonna get through the? Oh, yeah, we got 15 minutes. We're fine. Okay, critical value method for standard deviation. Yeah, okay, I don't tell you this is this is standard deviation, so we look for. To test the claim that the birth weights of girls have the same standard deviation, so we're talking standard deviation, what symbol do we use? Sigma. Sigma, okay, equal to, and it says the standard deviation is the same for boys, which is 60, or 660.2. That's what we're gonna have for our sigma, 660.2. Okay, what's the bottom one? Greater than, less than, not equal to. Not equal to 660.2. Which one's the claim? The top. The top. Claim is the top. Okay. All right. Um, left tail, right tail, two tails. Two. Two. Okay. What's the fish? Point, 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 one. Point, point one zero? No, point no, point zero, zero one. one. Okay. So 1%. Which means we have to? Point zero zero five. Half a percentage. Half a percentage. Which is in the middle we have? 99%. Okay. What chart are we looking up? Mm. Uh, the chi-squared chart, right? Whatever. That like weird one that has two columns. So we're looking at 99% and then what else do we need to know? Degrees of freedom is how much? 29. We have 30 girls. 29. So 29. 29 at 99%. What do you got for numbers? 14.27. Okay. And 49.588. 588. Got it. Okay, so now, now what? Plug it in. Plug it in. Let's see. The formula is. Ugh, I Five. forget. N minus. Is it the square root or no? S no. N minus one. N minus one times s squared over sigma squared, but it's not the square root of that, right? No. It's just that thing. Okay. Um, okay. So that's my value for my critical number, right? N minus one was twenty nine times. I don't know. I didn't even know. I didn't even write down the other stuff. Point. Um, eight twenty nine point five. Point five squared. Squared over. Five what's the six sixty point two squared? That's what we're comparing to. Yes. Right? Okay. All right. I'm running out of room. It's forty five point eight. Forty five point eight ish. Yes. Okay. All right. So where does he live? Uh, not in the shaded region. Yep. Forty five lives like over here. So it is to the right a little bit, but are we going to say equal to or not equal to? Uh, equal to. 
equal to, he's not far enough in the extreme values to say that he's not equal, right? So he's there, and we cross this one off, so this is going to be? FTR, claim true. FTR, H naught, claim true. Like, is this getting, like, really redundant? Like, these are the same steps every single time using a different formula. If it was in the other shaded region, that would be, like, too far. If yes, it if it's in the shaded region at all, we're going to say it's not equal to. The middle is what's equal, right? Yeah. Equal is the middle. If it's in one of the extremes, we're saying it's way too far to be equal to whatever the middle is, right? Okay? So, it's in an extreme value. Got it? Mm -hmm. Happy with that? Okay, so what does this mean? Let's just talk about the meaning of it in case I ask you for that. It means this means that... It's close enough. Yeah, what's close enough? The weight of girls it's compared not to boys. The, the standard deviation of girls versus boys, which means the girls are not deviating more than the boys are, right? Like their weights, the same. their weights, the weights for baby boys and the weights for baby girls are going to be pretty well similar to each other, right? Like their variation is not different. Like the girls aren't, some of them heavy, some of them light, right? Like they're all pretty well the same, okay? All right, as far as it goes for boys. Confidence interval method. This is, I'm going to write the formula down here. We've got confidence interval method. N minus 1. S squared over chi squared Left. right on this side. Mu, uh, not mu, sigma. Right? Did I write that down right? Yeah. Square root n minus 1 s squared over chi squared left. Okay? All right, I'm going to go through this problem and I'm going to show you the one thing that people what? screw up all the time because they get to the test and they're like, Bleh. do I square it or not square it? Okay, so here we go. You don't. I'm not going to tell you on the test that this is a standard deviation. To test the claim, to test the claim that the machine dispenses amounts of uh, standard deviation greater than, so sigma equals and sigma's greater than, what number? 0.15. and 0.15, which one's the claim? The bottom. Okay. Okay, let me write down some stuff. N is how much? N? 27. X bar is? Did you know that when you're doing standard deviation? Yeah, I think the one from your quiz, maybe. I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> X bar, did you know that you don't use X bar when you're doing standard deviation? Ever. In any of these equations, you don't use X bar. That confuses a lot of people because they're like, where do I use that number? You don't. They're giving you information that you don't need. Because a lot of times it doesn't, it's not meaningful for a standard deviation until you have the average, right? So they're just giving you for that. Okay? Um, As in, like, any of these that we're doing, the standard deviation one. The standard deviation that I have is 0.17, okay? Yeah. Which is, in yeah. fact, greater than 15. But yeah. is it just for my sample, or is it greater than, like, in all cases, right? That's what we're trying to decide. Just yours. So we're doing this confidence interval method style. Here we go. Let's fill my bell curve in. We've got uh, greater than, which is right tail. Okay, the fish value is how much? 5%. We use 5% a lot. 0 0.05. So all 5% goes here, which means an imaginary 5%, which means 90% in the middle. Okay, that helps me find. We're on the chi squared chart, right? 90% at how many degrees of freedom? Do we have a 26? Yes, okay. What's 26 and 90%? The two numbers. 17.392. And? 35.563. Okay, all right, here's what people screw up all the time. Ready for this? They see this formula, and then your brain turns to mush because you're like, oh crap, how do I put this? Was it 563? Yeah. Okay, your brain turns to mush. You start to enter stuff in. N minus 1 is 26. S was 0.17 squared. And then they get to this bottom. Don't and they're like, oh man, this number that I have here, when I go to plug it in, do I square that number? No. Or do I leave that number? It's it's already. already called chi squared, so you do not have to square this number at all, right? It's just the right number. It's just the right number, like the right side number, okay? So, 35.563, and then the same formula on the left side, 26.17 squared, 17.292, uh, okay? Let's figure out what those numbers are. This one and this one. Does somebody have those? What? Yes. 145 on the left. 0.145? What? Yes. And then 0.208. 0.208? Yes. 
Okay. Oh, no. Like, how do you oh, know no. if that's even, like, right? I don't know. Because, uh, like, you know. the confidence interval that we had up here was, like, 51 and 78. How did we go this from 51 to 78? This is standard deviation. Look at your claim. You are claiming 0.15. Is this about-ish 0.15? Yeah. Yeah. That's why our numbers are so small, right? Okay. Now we have to just make our decision. This is where sigma must SDR live. SDR claim full. Does 15 live in there? No. Or it's lives in between. It yeah. lives in between. So we're going to circle this one, cross this one off. So FTR, H naught, claim is? In the thingy right there. False. False. Claim is false. Right? Yes. Yes? Wait, Good? Stay there, please. Stay there. I'm staying here. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see my formula and stuff. Okay? Emma. Happy with that? Emma! <laughs> oh my gosh, don't just ah. stare at it. <laughs> ah. I have a towel Yay. somewhere. Did you take these questions from Cass? When? I go get water. Uh -huh. So it's only smoke proof if you have the lid on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's usually how. Yeah, that's usually how most cups work. I don't have my towel on. Okay. Okay. Did somebody go down to? No, it's far through that quiz and I didn't. It's just gonna dry.